There's another season coming up, not only fall, but what? Season is coming up soon. Football. Yeah, that's right. I heard somebody whisper it. You all know, but you're afraid to say it. Now, right? No, most people follow the Packers, right? Well, probably everybody but me. Well, I do too. But So anyway, what happens on a Sunday when you're sitting there watching the game and players are just messing up left and right, and you're saying, hey, what you need to do is run a blitz, or what you need to do is throw the long pass, or what you need to do is throw a screen, or you need to just take a knee. Is it easy? We know exactly what to do sitting in the comfort of our chair, probably having soda <laughs> and popcorn. Yeah, this is a good German crowd. I doubt that. But anyway, for these purposes, soda and popcorn. Because it's easy to be an armchair quarterback. They call it armchair quarterbacks, right? It's easy to know. You know, and, and I think, you know, a lot of that's easy. Life is getting that way too. For me, getting older, I think, my mind, I could do all kinds of things. I want to do all kinds of things. My body says, eh, you ain't going to happen. No, you do that, you're going to be hurt for the next three days. So just take it easy, slow the mind down. But oftentimes, there's something that, that I should get a little kick in the pants for. I'm thinking about something, thinking about something, just do it, right? The Nike, just do it. You know, why not? It's easy to sit and think about all kinds of things, but can you actually do it? There was a, there was a, there's a, I don't know what to call it, a story. Five frogs sitting in a log, four decide to jump in, how many frogs are left on the log? Five. The frogs decided to jump, they didn't actually jump. Oh, see, it took me four or five times to get that one, too. Even with the John Maxwell explaining it to me. So what James is saying here, and a lot of people say, James is so opposed to Paul in so many ways, because Paul talks about, oh, you can't do works righteousness, and people think that's what James is, all about works, righteousness, working your way to heaven. James and Paul both thought that faith was trust in God. Also, when you have that faith, when your faith develops, then you naturally produce action. And that's what James is saying here. We have this deep-seated something in our hearts. We call it faith. We call it inspiration. We call it a lot of things. What James is saying is, you know, get off your keister and do something with it even if it's small. And there's some of us that at times we can't do much physically. When I, when I sometimes when I visit people who can't make it to church, we have to give communion in their place. And they're so frustrated because they can't do anything. I said, well, at least there's prayer, there's, there's phone calls, there's cards, and a lot of them will do that. There's various ways of connecting with each other that they can do, as well as feel in their hearts and say their prayers. We pray for people, and that's a, wor a work as well. That's something we do as well. Probably not as much as we'd like to, or we have time for sometimes. But James puts that spin on it that with our deepening faith, there's just a natural inclination to do stuff. Martin Luther said you probably shouldn't pray. When you do pray, just say a few words. Don't go on and on and on. And when you do, just wait until the words just well up until you see, just have to say them. So the Spirit pushes the words, the right words, the words to come out of your mouth so that you do something too. You know, in this script, in this gospel lesson too with Mark, you know, the man with the withered hand, there's Jesus. And Jesus has been walking around the country talking. And he's been doing some healing too, but he's doing a lot of talking and preaching and teaching. But here's one example where Jesus puts it on the line. He does something when the law says you shouldn't do anything. On the Sabbath, when you see Orthodox Jews, they're walking to temple. They're not driving their car, they're walking to, to temple or whatever they're doing. Jesus actually does something. Showing that sometimes you do something, even if it's not looked upon as being right, but is done out of love and healing and care and concern for someone else. 
And that's what the point of James is, is saying the Christian way is not easy. It's not always going to be rose-colored and the yellow brick road. But it is there for us. We have choices to make whether we follow Jesus in doing the right thing, maybe at the wrong time, supposedly, or we just follow along the crowd and do nothing. When justice demands, we, we do something. We take and do action. Our thoughts are great. They get us thinking. They get us making a plan. And then there's time for making action happen with the plan. Jesus was good about doing that. The disciples, I imagine, scratched their head once in a while and said, what are you doing? I'm doing this out of the love that I have for God. The love that God has given for me, I'm doing this because I'm expressing I can do no, no other. And so I do. To follow my words, that sense of integrity, that there is a unity with, with what we think and with what we do. Kids follow our actions, sometimes our words. But James is saying, there's a good balance. And there's always a sign, an outward sign of what you're feeling inside by what you do. And don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed. Sometimes that's the way to go. Amen.